Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting right to episodes one and two of Yes, Pretty Cure 5, Coco. Yes, we are finally doing this one too. Um, because I remember, you know, when we were watching initial first go go, um, and rewatching that, that I kept saying I was, and then I kind of, I kind of stopped after I said I was going to take a little break, because I was so busy with like, at that time it was considered a Patreon show, and I had to get it done fairly quickly and such, and I was just like, I need to get this out, I need to do this, da da da. da. It was a lot of things to do, so I said, okay, I think after this, before eventually, maybe when I do go go, I want to take a break first. Well. So, as I said with the other show, aka Mahot's Guy, pretty here, um, of course, with news coming out recently that both this series and Mahot's Guy are getting sequels with them as adults. Gogo -Go is coming out this year and Mahot's Guys will be coming out next year's and such. I, I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and continue and such. So, as I said in the Mahot's Guy video, you are now getting... A full weekend of pretty gear. So you're getting Hirogato on Saturdays and you're getting Mahotsukai and yes, go go on Sundays and such. So <laughs> yay! I, honestly, I'm ready, really excited to go back into this one. This one I haven't like I have not seen initially since 2008. Um I do remember the one thing that is going to happen, aka you know, evil cure dream or dark dream. Um coming in and then like a couple other things, but Initially, this is about to be like my like it's gonna be like rewatching like it's gonna be like my first time all over again, essentially with this. So of course you're going to see me fangirl over everything. I'm excited to see all my girls, of course, finally getting milky freaking rose in this. Um, seeing nuts and cocoa again, just having the family back and such. Just it's gonna feel good and such. But we all know, and I have a feeling with this because I even said it in the Mahot Sky video that if these two do well for Toei, which of course it is, because ever since Healing Goods movie with this group, it kind of really was a little confirmed that they were going to do something else with this group. Because, like I said, the Healing Good movie first featured these girls. And then, because they are so popular and iconic, just like with the Mahotsukai girls, that's why they were like, okay, we're just going to give them something else. So, if this does good, which I know it is, it's opening the doors for, once again, any of the other girls in the remainder of the series besides Hirogato. Because I can only say, we can only count Hirogato once it's done that's the thing we'll be able to see these girls as adults and I think that's gonna really bring everything to light more for a lot of people who really truly want to see that and such because in the last couple of years with some of these shows for for some of these seasons I'm sorry I can't speak um we don't get to see them as adults delicious did that ish healing did that ish tropical rouge did that ish um those are the current three that I can really think of because Star Trinkle didn't do it. We all know that. But hopefully with Hirogato, we do get to see them older. That's the biggest goal that we all want is older versions of these girls where they're in adult forms and they're thriving. That's all you want at the end of the day. But <laughs> other than that, let's go ahead and get started with episode one in three, two, one, go. And of course, we're probably starting on nose vein, right? <laughs> of course. Dorada. Of course. Komachi. And cutting. I am just hoping, and I think we are all hoping I can speak for a lot of us that the the cocoa 
Nosamine chip is not canon. It's just, to me, it's still too weird. I know. Now, are they going to show Milky initially with us, or are they going to be smart? I don't... Mm. Well, no. There we go! <laughs> but see, something just tells me they're, they're going to make it canon and such because of the fact is, like, she'll be older. I just don't want it. That's just me. There's a lot of people who really don't want it because of the fact is the age difference. I mean, because yes, they are adorable together, but at the same time, you just think about that ish in the back of your mind. You're like, no. Well, why don't you open it? All right, friend. Guys, Coco. One at a time. It's from Coco. Just open the letter. Oh, no, it's from, yeah. I mean, because, you know, it can't be just a simple letter, right? Been like, um, no knows me, but knows me. It's just gonna close.
Wait, hold on now. Remember, girls, girls, one at a time. I just also love the fact that they literally also put her in the freaking. She's right there, even though she ain't gonna be in the show for a while. No. Well, I mean, of course, because she can't use her previous item. Can't use the watch because the watch is gone. Okay, deliver this. Uh-uh. Yes. Oh, damn. The letter. Is her feelings in it? Because she misses Coco so much. Uh, 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 uh. Wait. I know that voice. Where have I heard that voice before? Jesus Christ. Once again, you know, when you have all uh, the freaking OP behind good ass cast and then you know you got the supporting cast and you're trying to remember who that is and you can't remember who it is
Wait, I think I know. Hi, Miss. Oh, God. No, no, no. It's just... She knows of me. Oh, me. No, it's a me. <laughs> Right, I mean, you know, we're being attacked currently. Once again, you're telling me nobody saw this. No one saw this. No, no one was walking their dog, whatever. You tried, though. I know you tried to look like a penguin. Yeah. Girls, we don't have time for this. Bye, Sarah. He risks his own life to get that letter. I mean, well, yeah, knows me. He is the bad guy.
the back. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes, you, you did a JoJo move, baby. That's okay, because you can't really transform. Yeah, we got business to do. The detail in that, uh. Oh. Now my thing is, because I have not seen the Healing Good movie yet with them, did they use and enhance the Jewish races? I just watch it like soon. Just can't watch it on the freaking app that I wanted to watch it because you know they don't have bios for it. So either I'll do it like I did with what's this, with um the fifteenth anniversary movie, or I'll just probably react to it because I still need to watch the Tropical Rouge movie. And I think I accidentally deleted the file, so now I have to remake the file. And don't well download it again separate it and then officially wash it or I have to check I don't know
guy. Like, uh. And that's how we ended the version. <laughs> Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Like, okay. It is interesting that Milk isn't really there with Nuts and Coco. I mean, she, because Nuts and Coco were the only two who showed up first initially with the butterflies. Yes. But at the same time, she's got to be somewhere because, of course, she's important to the cast because she is milky. So, she there. She just waiting for her time to like, you know, come in and take the screen because <laughs> it's her moment. But seriously, Sarah, my baby. Oh my God. I'm ready to see him and what da. <laughs> but of course, I, I initially, once Co <laughs> Coco and Nose and me saw each other, it, it's just like, uh, there it is. Like, at the time, you know what? And I'll say it like this. Okay. So, the one other show that I can compare this to with this relationship, of course, I can I can speak to my the guys and the girls who have seen this show. There's one couple on this show that I've watched, okay, PLO, where at the time when we were all in high school, Of course, I get that, but it's her job. No. And then, of course, nuts. Nuts is gonna. <laughs> nuts is gonna be an ass, like always. <laughs> but when I when I initially look at Nozamine and Coco, especially not as like you know cute little animal and freaking human we're talking about when he is in his human form and just this regular 16 14 15 year old girl and the relationship that these two have it's very similar to a certain couple that when i was in high school i shipped the hell out of from do i have, yeah i still have these books <laughs> let me get the first book it is right here from this series Freaking, got dust all over it. Freaking pretty little liars esque, and how we were so in love with them being in love and stuff, and we, at that time, we didn't see that. We were we were very much blinded by that, and so when I see that, it just reminds me of it because it's always so funny when you're watching stuff that you used to watch as like a kid or a teenager, and. The things that, you know, your parents would always tell you. But, like, you know, they can't be together because of this. Da, 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 this is wrong. And everything. And you're over here like, no, no, no. They're good together. It's right together. Let them be together. And then when you're older and you rewatch the show and you see how gruesome that relationship is and such, then you're like, yeah, you know what? My parents was kind of right. Yeah. I mean, with these two, there there are romantic moments with them. You can see it, especially when you're looking at first, yes, going on into Go-Go and then maybe any other moments where they had in like the movies and such. But I initially always look at them as friends. I think, you know, younger me, 2007 to 2008 me, aka middle school Deja, middle school one, high school Deja, um, probably did ship them. And I think I said that in like the Go series, the previous series as well, where I was like, yeah, I probably did. I don't really remember. But I was, like I said, I was always a nuts girl. Nuts, it was something about nuts that I was just like, I like you. And inside, I was just like, Coco, no, get out of my way. I don't want anything to do with you, Coco. But nuts, the yes. And then, you know, it got worse once I found out who he's voiced by. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> 
No, the big elephant in the room. You, like, I did not remember the one. No, because see, at the time, my vast knowledge of seiyus and what they worked in, like, crazy. But now, like, you were telling me. Middle school teacher, you were telling me that we didn't know that that was fucking deal. Yeah, once again, in, in the world of pretty hair, you never know who's going to be in this series and such. That's why, like, everybody from Futariwa all the way to, we can, I'll count Hirogato because, regardless, they, they are all sarcastic because whatever they do after this, they'll always be known for pretty hair, but as, if I can speak for this cast, once again, like, if we look at two of them, aka Rin and Nozamine, um, and what they're currently doing, even though, what we use Nozomi's voice actress, for example, because she plays the sun. Um, her her show is currently on hiatus now. But um, Rin Sei, of course, everybody knows who that is. Like, regardless, to the ends of her day, she will always be known for that character. And same thing for this. Um, for the rest of them, like, personally for me, as I said, Urara, she's, of course, she's in Bandari. And... Urara's Seiyu has been in a lot of things recently, and it's so funny because we were also talking about Jojo. Hell, the girl was also in Jojo too. And <laughs> we all know how I felt during that time, having two pretty curious and Kobayashi in Stone Ocean together and literally fangirling every single week up until, you know, that moment. And then it was the same thing for Chainsaw Man, because she was also in Chainsaw Man as well. And then that moment happened. And then there was like, yeah, you know what? We're going to take the pretty cure out. And I was just like this the whole entire time. I was like, I'm going to still watch the show because I like this show. But you took the pretty cure out. <laughs> like, oh. Um, but then, yeah, looking at this whole cast and just seeing where they are now. And the fact is that they're going to be able once again to come back and play these iconic roles for the bazillion of time again but as older so we're going to see them like as their careers and everything and it's just it, it makes me happy like seriously you're making my inner child and my adult version of me now like super happy because never in my wildest dreams i would have thought that we would have been in a in the timeline in a history that we get to see them in a spin-off type series or a sequel or whatever that we're going to see them older. And they're probably still going to transform and such. And I wonder how they're going to do that and how it's going to be. But still, especially going into Go Princess. When, you know, whenever I do end up rewatching that show. Hey, hey, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's just, it's going to be very interesting to see that in like the next couple of months, even though we're no, because I think it's supposed to come in fall. So we're nowhere near there. I feel like by the time we get to it, we should be done with both Yes and Mahot's guy. Probably I'll say more Mahot. Nope. I'll say more of Yes because Yes is only 48 and Mahot's guy is 50, but it's still the same length. It's going to take me at least 24 to 25 weeks to get it done. So it's about like a good three to four months, maybe if I am quote, quote unquote consistent and you know, Promising right here right now because it's every single Sunday. Yes, but go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode two All right episode two in three two one go Probably also said this as a kid too. She also gives me the Aqua Regina feels from Mermaid Melody. <laughs> it's just every every like kind of like female and looks almost like a goddess or a princess. You'd be like, yeah, Aqua Regina sama.
Seriously, imagine watching three figure series in one year, right? That never would have happened. <laughs> But that's when we get into the old school by kicking up my ass. That's it. Okay. Oh. oh, of course. The fact that they did so Komachi and nothing else. Don't be mean. Yeah, and of course, the bad guys have them. Mm -hmm. Eternal has them. Is that one guy from the previous series also showing up? I mean, because he's in the opening, too. <laughs> yeah? The triggering word.
Uh, syrup. Oh. Because he's scared and he doesn't want her out there again because it's dangerous. Because he cares for her. <laughs> yeah, but you're being a little too harsh. I mean, damn. <laughs> <laughs> nudge, nudge. Final cure. You know, at that time, we just didn't know. <laughs> It makes me wish we could have just like a time machine to just go back and just see what so many people were thinking in 2008 for the series. You didn't look happy though. Oh, no, it's me. I think this is one of the merry, like, teen teenage teachers. Like, oh my gosh, shit! Ah, ah. It's like me right now. Mm hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
<gülüyor> Say it again in the Say it again. I mean, once again, you know, they are the bad guys. Child, child, oh my god. This is why I like, I, <laughs> I probably had, and it's just continuing the, like, cause I, I love the crap out of syrup, but oh my god, his mouth, oh my freaking god. <laughs> Like a little smart alley. Hug. <laughs> Gotta love him though. He just be honest. <laughs> but sometimes he goes too far. Once again, we just screwing up the library. Jesus. <sighs> Well, you know, in the back talking, but you know, they're kind of a little busy right now. Oh, no, no. Look, hit a gato, hit a gato. This how you do it. That's how you do it. This is what you do. This is what you do. Cuts on cuts on cuts on cuts, and then you bring it all together. Yes, that's what we do.
go. Yeah, babe, that's still part of the new power up. Which is? Well, I got another pinky. <laughs> ah. No, it's a. <laughs> oh. No, I mean, I wouldn't consider that a failure, though, but. Uh... It's okay, sir. You don't understand. Hi, head little boy. Hi, head boy. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just know right now my t teenage me is rolling. And like, oh my god, Deja. You know, older Deja. You don't know how angry he made. <laughs> Just over here talking to my younger son, but like, yeah, I know, I know now. <laughs> we were rewatching this. I know this child right here. Oh my god! <laughs> but I mean, I get it. He's still adorable. At the end of the day, I mean, okay. Once again, I get it. Coco does not want Nosemean and the rest of them to go into this danger. But in order to help Flora, they have to do this. It's their destiny. I, I can't imagine if someone else was like, hey, I need you to be a pretty girl. I need you to do this. Yes, it's like a hard behind job because you, girl, you a superhero. You, you a magical girl. You got to deal with the faith of humanity and, you know, all that is like writing on your hands and one wrong move. Mm. I mean, but yeah, that is a lot of pressure on one girl. And mm, that's why we had a lot of moments with Nozamine in the previous season. And of course, we're just going to continue on that. But I do like it when there are points or moments that whenever Coco is sad, it's either nuts or knows me coming in to save the day. Or it's the same thing like if nuts is sad, that's, that's Komachi. Komachi, Komachi only. Still, yeah, Sarah is a little shit, but I love him so much. <laughs> I really do. But, okay, one other thing I'm going to say, and I, I did say this with, when I initially rewatched Yes um, in the previous series for uh, Patreon and stuff. The fight sequences, you know, when you're looking at anything from Kitty Kitty. No, well, no, let me change that. 
Mm, no, okay, no. We'll say kid from kid kid onwards to maybe like a mixture of maybe healing gun tropical rouge. Now, when you look at more, I, you can also kind of, well, no, we'll say from Kitakata all the way to, to Hiragato because I feel like they're going to kind of do it as well. So, Futariwa all the way to go Prince, no, Futariwa all the way to Maholtzkai, from what I initially remember of Maholtzkai. We always had fist fighting, getting there, kicking some ass, da 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 da, you know, some good, nice action of butt kicking and such and then there was this switch that once when kira kira aired you still got the moments where like yeah they were fist fighting and whatever but they initially kind of changed it where it was like okay we're gonna use the wands or aka okay, their magical girl item instead of always kicking butt and so every other series after kira kira has been very similar on that that's why there's more like Oh, a couple of minutes of fight sequences, and then we're using the wand. Now, like, if you're looking at Hirogato, with seven weeks in, by the time this comes out, it'll be week eight. Um, It's kind of that mixture still as well, but they're only using it as the final thing, of course, because they have to. So you're getting a lot more, like, we're getting at least three to five minutes of, okay, hey, they're not initially fighting with the wand. They're still using their own magical powers, but still also using their hands, using their feet, arms, whatever and such, still to kick some butt. And so that's initially what I like what they're going back to because initially still at the same time, no matter how many years you're in with a series, you still always want to go back to your roots and go back to why people like this series initially in the first place. It, it's like the same thing with Dragon Ball and stuff because... Imagine if Dragon Ball did something different that people didn't like. Um, of course, backlash. That's immediately what you would hear. But then you would also hear older fans be like, okay, why don't you just go back to what you did with this? I mean, that's the same thing kind of like, okay, for example, another Toei series, Sailor Freaking Moon. Now, looking at Crystal, and Crystal is the one-to-one, -one, you know, version of the manga. We all know that. That's the same thing with Tokyo Mimi, but we're also going to talk about that in a few minutes. Um... Because I have some things to say about Tokyo Mew in a second. <laughs> the one thing that we all hated was the transformation sequence. I, I can, you know, say, I can speak for a majority of us that we hated the 3D. And it, it's so funny because with this series, for Pretty Care, it worked. It truly worked. They were able to find something that made it look good. Like I said, look at Happiness Charge and look at Go Princess in a nutshell. But when you're comparing the 3D CGI as to Sailor Moon Crystal and a transformation scene, something just fell off. And then plus at the time when you were looking at the quality of Sailor Moon Crystal versus, and this, and I'm not talking about mainly the movies. I'm mainly talking about the first two seasons. Season three was better because they took the, you know, the fan backlash from everyone and took all that and ran with it and said this is what we what we did and this is what we're going to try to do to not go back to this and such and so i love it when series or animation studios or just anyone in general takes the criticism and everything that people said oh hey i didn't like this but i did like this so yeah whatever i liked about this you continue doing good on that but at the same time whatever i didn't like you make that better and that's the, that's the one thing that, you know, us as fans, we're supposed to do. We're supposed to say what we liked, what we didn't like. That is criticism. And if you can't handle that, then why are you in this industry and such? That's also just an anger coming out towards a certain series of a reboot that I like. But still, criticism. But going back to Sailor Moon Crystal and such, that was the big reason on why we went from a CGI transformation back to 2D. 2D is what Sailor Moon should have always been like. I, I feel like, yes, it was a gamble for Crystal to put in the CGI because, yes, they wanted something um, different and unique and stuff. But when you look at the sequences of Pretty Care for Happiness Charge and Go Princess and their 3D aspect versus the transformation scenes for SMC, you already know Pretty Care is going to win for that. And that's why it's like, I, I felt like they... They chose the right people for the 
for every particular series but with smc especially with the first two seasons it's like iffy and such so mm -hmm. I i'm just hoping when the movie comes out for the last series of course it's gonna be just good because i enjoyed of course my personal favorite season with that but yes now with miss mm -hmm. Mew, Mew okay with that series and with the fact that they're doing the the same thing like they did with fmc and such i think my little my problem with that kind of really comparing it to this is the same thing of the fight sequences to me looking at tokimi Mew new the fight sequences in my opinion aren't that long they're really short in my opinion and it feels like the episode goes by very fast and such and that's why i was like well i mean i get it because once again with the smc thing it's supposed to be like you know the one-to-one -one, you know creation of the manga and stuff in anime form and that's why they're skipping out on a lot of things and that's why i think i also said the characters felt bland to me but you're watching the manga version of these characters so you're going to not get the original anime and such George, when you're getting the volatation on it but I did, guys. You do what you gotta do. But, yes, I'm excited to continue on with this. I cannot wait to see Milky again. Even though she's popping up next week, even though we just saw her in episode one. But still, seeing Baby as Milky Rose highlights, yes, because, you know, Final Cure-esque. Um, and I feel like somebody is going to ask me. I, I think probably. I said, I said that Aqua was my favorite. Aqua is still my favorite. It's between Aqua and Lemonade because I love them both so much and I relate to them in certain ways and aspects. But yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> but show <laughs> like I said, don't don't make them canon. Don't make it canon. I'm gonna be saying that every single week with this series. Do not make them canon. Even though Toei, I know you. You're you're gonna make them canon because. As a teenager, we all love those two. We all love Nose and Coco together, but. I, something just tells me they're going to make them canon just as much as they're going to make Syrup and Urara canon and Nuts and Komachi officially canon as well and such. There's there's a lot of romance-esque in this series of Pretty Cure where it's like, is it, there going to be adults or remaking them canon? But we won't know because then that makes me wonder if they'll make um, Ridai, Mirai and Riko canon. Because I want that. Because Nagisa and Honaka, they're already canon. We all know that. Everybody freaking knows that those two are canon. They are they are married regardless. There is even a figure of them in wedding dresses together. So canon. Already canonized and everything. So just do it for it. Just make people happy. That's all you want. <laughs> but other than that, guys. That is my reaction view towards episodes one and two of Yes, Pretty Cure 5 Go Go. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Sunday for episodes three and four. Bye, guys.